Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. I was looking at CBSN, I believe, but that's CBSN, one of these news channels anyway. And the young lady just got through um, interviewing Ludacris. I believe, yeah, this was ABC Live, I believe. We're gonna. I want to get this correct. Cause I don't want to make a mistake. So while I'm talking to you all, I'll be searching the correct uh, news station that was. Anyway, she was in a during Ludacris, and it was called Music and the Movement. If I'm recalling uh, what the uh, interview was about, the title, and Ludacris was saying, you know, we got to. Love, not hate. Okay, yeah, this that was ABC News. On ABC News. Love trumps hate. He said, we're going to make music to make the children laugh and smile. He was stating that we're going to Give this feel good moment to deal with the current situation of racism and injustice that black people have been suffering from for for, for, for over 400 years. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but then I thought about it. He's a celebrity. He's not trained, nor is he allowed to attack the issue straight up and give the issue the care and concern that it needs in order to properly heal the current situation. You cannot tell a victim of any kind of brutality whether it's police brutality whether it's domestic brutality to love the person or the institution that is causing you pain and hoping that that will ease the desire and the person that's brutalizing you to treat you just and fair so his blow won't come down so hard upon you because you're with your arms over your head trying to protect yourself from the blow and at the same time trying to spew out love, hoping that he will show you mercy. It's sad. It's hypocritical. It's a slap in the face of every black and brown parent that's in America. And for one, parents. Whenever these celebrities come on your screen and try to put you and your children to sleep, cut your TV off. Turn your back on them. Because he doesn't have the solution to fix the problem because your children will face this same racist system when they get older if it's not solved today and if the momentum is not taken full advantage of to create a universal change. You know, it's easy. That's why they call celebrities stars because when a person look at them they lose all sense of thought 
and they fall into the gaze of the star. So the star can get up there scripted with a purpose, not for your children, but somebody shuffle them out there and they got to get out there and read the script. And at the end, they'll say, hey, I'm just an actor. I'm just a celebrity. You know, you're the parents. Why are your children even listening to me in the first place? That's how the game goes. Do not listen to these celebrities. Now, because they have no solution. They sent out to put the people back to sleep and to accept their role uh, in society. Because, you know, those are the only roles that some of these celebrities can get. So they need to keep the narrative moving forward, right? The, the scared black man, plenty of roles for that. The butler, plenty of roles for that. Uh, the black man is getting abused, pretty ro- plenty of roles for that. The black man and woman that's first killed in a horror movie. Nah. The mammy, plenty of roles for that. Anything that's uh, degrading or which shows you as a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth class citizen in the United States, roles around the block, plenty of roles for that. So they figure, well, you know, as long as we keep this narrative in play, I can always have a role and I can always eat because I can play that role good. But when you start talking about uplifting black people and black power and stand strong and love yourself and quote Malcolm, quote Noble Drew Ali or quote Marcus Garvin, quote Minister Farrakhan, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, I can't play that role. I don't know nothing about consciousness. I don't know anything about the uh, uh, true black history. And if I do know about it, I can't say that on white folk stations. This is for they're letting me go. Man, I lose. They're not finna. I can't get no acting gigs talking about black power unless white folks write a script about black power. And, you know, and they, and they lean it towards their vision. Then I can uh, say something towards black power. But uh, now, no, I'm not jeopardizing me getting up on stage and rapping or singing or dancing, uh, bringing in some type of income. And and majority of the uh, my listening audience is white. I can't, I got to give the people what they want. I can't disappoint my white fans. Look, if you want to truly, truly get rid of uh, the racism, the inferiority complex, uh, the insecurity, the systemic racism uh, that's in the justice system and in corporate America, today's the day, now is the time. You got to pull down that old mindset and present the new mindset in a way to where it would be beneficial to all parties, right? How do you do that? Well, we will tell you right here on Verbal Pig Radio. Look, you shoot my dog, I slay your cat. Public enemy said in Flavor Flav stated. All right. You hurt one of my family members, I'll hurt one of yours. All right. Black cops, what the hell are you doing? Meaning that a lot of these black officers, well, let me put it like this. The public and the people that you control, that you patrol in certain districts are not idiots and they're not dumb. They see you stand by while white cops 
project their hateful and racist venom towards black people. They see you stand there and look away as if you're a robot. They see it. They black folk. They people know. You know. They see it. They wondering uh, why you don't step in and intervene. What? Now the cop will try to justify it and say, ah, look, at, look at your neighborhood. Why are you not doing so and so, this and this, this and this, right? And one of the reasons is is that when a when when a voice has been snatched from the, the, the lungs, the vocal cords of an individual, meaning that when a person been beat down so much their voice tends to get uh, a little light. You know, because fear sets in. Example. Young black men start off in the school system, right? Go through the metal detectors, go into class. Uh, the prison complex is already set. Uh, the system is designed to tell you that you're wrong. Things that are praise doesn't have images of you in them. But things that are demeaning, that's when you come into the play. Right. Then the black people that you are supposed to look up to are black people that white folks pour to the side and cultivated them, then put them back out in the community and say, hey, if you want to be uh, um, respected and accepted in society, be like this black man we just groomed and made for you. But we know that that person is fake, so the realness or the God within us can't allow us to be that. You know? And so, here we go again. Back at square one, with the question remaining, how do we truly fix the problem? Now, I got to be honest. I'm not qualified in that aspect. The only one that is qualified is Mr. Farrakhan to give that response because he's been has the longest tenure living amongst all black leaders present today with the conscious mindset to heal the wounds, both sides, black and white. So if you're not taking your cue or your lead from the minister, then we have to assume that white folks put you in front of that TV and kind of gave you... Um, the narrative on which they want you to speak from to try to what? Put the people to sleep. When these celebrities come out, they're not coming out on behalf of black people. You can hear uh, by the language they use. They just don't want don't want your anger and by you being upset for over 400 years of injustice, they just don't want you and your anger to mess up uh, what they got going for themselves. Because they don't want to pick a side. You know. They got comfortable. In being the puppy. And. and, and but the, the, this generation. One. Generation X is like. We tired of this shit. Generation Z is like. We ain't having it. Man. You know. So the more you get out there. And side shuffle. And do your tap dance act. It's like quicksand. The more you sinking in the hole and the more your people looking at you ready to turn their back on you because they know that's not the proper response to 400 years of injustice. To come out with a damn song, the proper response. Ain't the proper response. You Now, you, now all of a sudden you're going to be hearing uh, Ray Charles' song, America. Mm, America and some utopia of 
uh, let's uh, look. We 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 love you, black folks. America love you. We feel bad about what happened. You know, from now on, guess what we'll do? We'll allow you to come dine in our restaurants. And we won't hassle you anymore. Is that is that good enough? Is that 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 that's something, right? That that's something, right? And you got some Negro that actually say, "Okay, well that's that's a start. That's a start." You know, because you wasn't doing that four months ago. And it's like, come on, man. But 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 but, but that's just an example of. When you've been downtrodden so much, you don't even recognize what good treatment is. So, they can give you any, any semblance of acceptance and your heart just warms up. Because that's what you wanted in the first place anyway. You know, and that that's for a lot of Negro leaders. You know, that's what they want in the first place. They like, God. Can you please send uh, some white folk that will embrace me and accept me? You know, that's their son. For some, that's their heart's desire. For some, for some others, don't give a damn about. If you respect me, you, you know, I respect myself. I just want equal and fair treatment. That's all that is. Yeah, I'm not your puppet. A lot of us feel that way. We're not puppets. We just want to be treated fairly, treated right. We want our ideology, our information, and our knowledge to be allowed in school systems. We want the teachers of the Army Elijah Muhammad within the school system because that's the science and the mathematics that will shape these young black men's minds and brain for the future. Not, not this watered down, dumbed down version that only prepares young black men to be a modern day servants who can't think for themselves, you know, who listen to celebrities guide them and celebrities with no knowledge at all. And you say, well, damn, Black. Well, how do you know these celebrities has no knowledge at all? Uh, I'm just merely looking at the, um, the, the, the angle, the, um, the side, the situation in which they took to express themselves uh, in this time of um, 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 revolution. Uh, you say revolution. Well, I'm saying revolution because of um, of a situation that's been brewing and brewing and brewing and brewing to where it spilled over because... Uh, did the pot couldn't hold the boiling water anymore. It had to come out. It bubbled over. Right. And that's that's similar to the situation that black folks experience in America, right? The nitpicking, the racism, the pointing the finger, the dogging out the Karens of the world, the racist cops, the racist judges, the racist attorneys, the racist neighbors. That this just got to a point to where it's like, it's like Abraham. You know, I always refer back to the Abraham theory, to where black folks tried everything, right? Okay, Hollywood, you want to predict all black men, like in colors, all gangs and thugs. Okay, well, are you, are you telling us that that's how you would like to see us and then you will give us freedom, justice, and equality? Okay, well... We'll play the thug role. Okay, we'll do that. Oh, damn, that didn't work. You start shooting us down the street. Okay, cool. All right, done deal. Okay. 
So now are you saying that um, we have to take a little bass out of our voice and we have to uh, imitate white men and go after white women, go after the white woman to show that we're uh, not aggressive and that we want to get along? If we do that, it, we, 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 can we get in that way? Still, that's, that's, that's not enough. Okay. Well, what if we take white Jesus and we worship on the white Jesus and we be the best Christians on the planet that, you know, the religion that you all gave us and we take white Jesus in our bosom, we'll hang him up on our cars, we'll put him in our churches, we'll hang him up in our homes. If we do that, it would, would that be good enough? Would, would you see us as equals? That don't work. Okay, well, we see that you portray our black men as drug dealers. What if we start selling drugs and fit the role that you got on the screen? Would, would that satisfy you? Would that suit you? No. Okay. Well, what if uh, when the police officers pull us over, we stick our hands out the window, or we comply, and we give them our license, and we, you know, would you not shoot us down? Oh, that don't work either? Well, well you know what? To hell with it, then I tell you what. We, cause we exhausted our measures, right? And they're like, well, we got one more trick up our sleeves, right? We're going to sing you the singing celebrity, and they're going to sing Amazing Grace. They're going to sing We Shall Overcome. They're going to sing America the Beautiful. They're going to sing so-and-so, this and that. Uh, will, that put, will that put black folk back to sleep? And the day they like, hell, no, nah, I won't even listen to them Negroes. We want complete freedom, justice, and equality. You can go and put them back on the shelf somewhere, stick them back in the closet. You know, come out here skinning and grinning to us. You know, hey, uh, tell that to uh, the mothers of the ones that's been shot down by these police officers. And you go up to them and say, well, look, I got a song we can all sing together and we can rock with it. And, you know, white folk love them Negro spirituals, you know, you know, you know. But really what they saying is, look, y'all making it hard on me. Master don't like this shit. You know, I got to get out here and do a song and make all y'all just, you know, uh, Love mass and cool y'all here. Y'all gonna get us in trouble now. You know, we got to love them. We, we got to love them till they love overcomes that hate. Don't hate. And, 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 and look, they know, and the whole world knows, black people don't have the power to hate nobody. Hate them with... Well, how we, how can a how black folk going affect white people lives with black hate? Oh, you can't get no money from this bank. <laughs> you you can't move in this neighborhood. Hey, I'm black. I have all the power. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm a black cop. Hey, white person, what what are you doing? What you reaching for a phone? I could be a gun. I'm gonna have to shoot you. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, right. You know, we sick and tired of these Negroes coming to black folks talking about who you come to the people who have no power to cause harm to the other side, but who, who, who's being harmed, and you tell the ones that's being harmed, well, you know, you got to, you got to love them, and maybe your love will stop them from hating you. Shit ain't worked in four hundred years. The hell is you talking about? She's pathetic. Who, who, who make the? Is there a factory? Why folk got a factory where they where they make these kind of Negroes? Where they come from? Uh, where they, do they? You know what I mean? Do they got carbon copies of robot Negroes that they go and create and shoot them out in the public and repeat the same message to keep the cycle uh, going? Generation after generation after generation. Now I put the blacks. Give me Tamika Mallory. Give me the Minister Farrakhan. Put put the Eileen Bays. You know Mary Kush. 
put these brothers with their scholarship, the Dr. Wesley Muhammad, you know, get, get these bro brother Ishmael, get the nation, just all the nation of Islam, Sister Ava, you know, Brother Abdul, set them forth and let's have a dialogue on what needs to be done. But don't serve none of these celebrities back in our face with no message about a goddamn song. I'm sorry. That, you know, look, I've been in the music business since, what, 98? I ain't out there trying to write no song to uh, heal the wounds of America. You can't heal 400 years of oppression with no damn song. What the hell is wrong with what the hell is these Negroes talking about? You're going to hear 400 years of oppression with a song. And and the, and the, and the funny part about it is you're not going to have not one conscious lyric in that song breaking down who the black man is and the greatness of black people and their accomplishments and give the names. You're going to be talking about some drink or some buck dance kind of damn lyrics you're going to throw together and get the people on the dance floor and party they self back to sleep. Hell, that game played out. I'm sorry, y'all. I just, I saw that and I'm like, damn, damn, wow, man. Wow. All the efforts and the strives that the, 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 the downtrodden, the poor, you know, who yelling, yelling from the bottom, look, get like brother, like I to say, get your knee off our necks, and then they'll go pull up a celebrity. You know, right when you get in the strength and you getting your knee off his neck, you moved it up an inch because you're getting ready to flip his ass over, right? Because you're tired of it. And then they throw one of them celebrities to sing you back to sleep to where your arms get weak and now the knee back on your neck again. Don't be no fool. Verbal Pick Radio, we out.